So anyway, here is what I'm going to say. Uh, this is the most distractible role-playing group I have played in for years. And so we have to um, focus, on, especially in resolutions, running up to a role. All I'm trying to do is establish what motions every single character is taking. And when somebody has the job of narrating, they have to be able to finish it for all the concerned individuals that they're sort of in charge of or are influencing in some way. So that means that diversions into how this relates to the history of the Eastern Orthodox Roman Empire or how this, you know, reminded you mm -hmm. of this other game or anything like that. Um, or what yeah. some other gamers who are not here would think of it, or anything of the kind. At least in those zones, right? The point where I'm like, okay, guys, we are running up to a roll. I know that, but we can't roll until we do these things. Um, and one thing I also noticed from that session is that people are still getting used to the idea that when they're talking about what their character is doing going into the roll, it's not about what's going to happen after, so that's mm -hmm. okay. You don't have to, like, say stuff to kind of cement down what will happen after. You can't. You're not allowed. So it's, uh, I think it's kind of reflexive, the idea of what you do. Well, okay, if I do this, then I want it to go like this. Right? So mm -hmm. that's exactly the phrasing we don't need. We just need to know what all's going into it. Well, we need to know all yeah. the things people are doing that, that are going into it. So, um... <laughs> So anyway, those are, and sometimes what a person I will can... Say, I will say one thing okay. that is pertinent to, to the game, and is that last session I felt like the, let's say the pedagogical value of the game, because I was feeling that a lot of the learned practices of finding out why you are rolling and what you want to roll were kind of failing me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was like, I... I feel I couldn't really find the, the way to step into a role, and I felt that kind of crisis element was positive. I mean, it's not a flow in the game. Right. It's a flow in my way to approach the game. Right, well, I, I could see, so, as I, I was editing, I could see you struggling with it again and again. Yeah. And so, in this case, everything I say before a role has no resolving power at all. And none of it preempts a role. I'm not saying things so that that can't be rolled against. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that, I think, is where a player may have a defensive crouch because they're used to the game master slipping in their bullshit plot outcomes, right, yeah. before the forced. role. So they're kind of like, yeah. well, yeah, before you do that, that guy jumps through the window. Oh, okay, go ahead and roll, right? See what I mean? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Yeah. And so... Um, that I think, and, and I'm not saying you were suspecting that specifically, but it leads to habits of talk Yes, that can become very murky. We're not sure whether something has been completed or not in many cases. Yeah. So I just want to let you know, when I talk before the roll, everything is just not quite resolved. Yes. Right? So he's jumping to get you is not me saying he jumps to get you. So you don't have to say, oh, well, if he gets me, I try to get away. You see what I mean? We're just narrating our way through events if we do that. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Um, so, that's, you know. that's precise. Here's the, yeah. Here's the, here's the struggle I had. I had a little bit, I, I was, on one occasion, I was a little bit confused about what the scope of the role was. Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, I thought that, okay, um, I'm going to say this, and then, depending upon they ha how they react, I may do this or that. But I didn't quite get that you had wanted to uh, encompass 
all of that into one uh, yeah. one I was, role. I was so, looking at that uh, as a as a case study, in fact, which was okay. that the I did describe how they were reacting to what you said. I gave emotional responses and actions from a lot of characters. I think that I was wonder. I was thinking to myself, are do they think that I'm narrating the outcome of Menu's? I mean, by, by I saying I this, con- I was confused. Yeah, by saying this, we're going into a role. So I just said to myself, okay, we're going into a role. I just need to. I need to tell everybody what every NPC is doing. And I found when I would say what a given NPC is doing, just and this is going into the role. So I'm just like, <laughs> right, going. This is what they're doing, going into the role. They reacted. They had a reaction to you. They're going in, and we're gonna. The whoever gets to narrate gets to finish all of those. Including, for example, an unexpectedly positive outcome to your speech. Right? Mm-hmm. And so, but that's not up to me. That's up to whoever narrates how they're going to do it and what the dice say. Claudio. So just to understand, um, first of all, um, well, I, I agree I'm easily distractible, so not like you're <laughs> dead on. It's not just it's um, not just you, believe me. All right. Um but the um, the example that you're trying to you're you're giving is the, the scene where we we were in the temple, right? No. And you were the example I'm giving now is the scene when you were tied up, and um, and Bushi was not yet tied up. And so the at that point, the uh, there was a lot going on. There was everybody was noticing that Tiru is wearing the sky armor. Everybody is. You're trying to wiggle out of the the ropes. Oh yeah. Uh, but I, I think I is, waited. On, Manu is until having later. A, like a, I'm sorry. What? Um, I waited until later to tell you what I was doing. If I recall correctly, you, you rewatched did. the video. Yes. So yes. Yeah. Okay. You did. Okay. So it it depended on particular times when different issues. I mean, I'm, if you want me to name names, Lorenzo had the hardest time reconciling what you say going into the role. Um, Menu had the hardest time when I would say, just try to orient the action around the role, before the role, you had the hardest time understanding that I wasn't narrating outcomes. Right. Okay, that's so, interesting. I'll try yeah. to, I, I'm, I'm not sure I agree, but I'll try to be careful about it in this session because sure. I... Well, um, this, this is what I'm just observing from looking at whatever. Yeah, it's your does. observation. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. accepted. I'll just try to be more careful. About um, it. And so, but I'm not necessarily saying that anybody was horrifically bad about it. It's just that in the slightly off-kilter dialogue where I'm kind of trying to maneuver, like, or arm wrestle you back to focusing on what's going on before the role... If I say X to one person, then one of you, the other people, will suddenly have a response or an idea about that, right? So I, I have to tell you that it was, I didn't realize how draining it was during play, but I actually visibly almost lost my temper at one point. So uh, I didn't, uh, the, I didn't the, realize that. It's something that. that happens to me on the Game Master side quite a bit. Um, and that I've never really understood how to handle. Where, like you're narrating something, and then another person comes in, like, "Oh, I want to do this." And I'm like, "Yeah, we're, we'll get to you, dude." And so I, I actually, I'm wondering how you deal with that because I say, um, I say, I find I a polite way. During the session. If if it's somebody yeah. that I'm not that close to, or play like only with screen and stuff like that, then I find a polite way to say, "Shut up, please." Mm-hmm. If it's somebody that I know well and I'm close to, I say, shut up, please. (laughs) (laughs) This is fucking wrong. And and you initiate this fucking chat. Lorenzo logs in and you say... Lorenzo, we are here to ascertain the status of your being. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I appreciate the I appreciate the appreciation. All right, um, but yeah. uh, but the, but the the other the nice thing about this group too is just how much freaking wit just keeps popping up in all the all the quadrants, which I'm really enjoying. Yeah. So all right. Um, with all that stated, 
uh, is has anybody added to their character story? I haven't. Uh, I'm honestly not exactly sure what I want to write because um, I'm well. Obviously, it's going to be um, limited to this uh, situation, so we're not running a longer, a longer story or a longer campaign. But um, and it's something that I struggle a bit with these games that require you to like add traits. That I write something too specific for the situation that we're in. And then that is not applicable anymore, and it's kind of like, well, I wasted right. space. Or, yeah. Can I can I lay all of those fears to rest, at least as far as the pool is concerned? Yeah. Because those fifteen words per session can be used to modify previous statements. You could say, "I want to redeem the worship of Spo." Mm -hmm. And redeem the worship of Spo trait. Okay, I'll drop four dice plus two. Right? Something like that. Then, at the end of the session, you say, I have redeemed the worship. So you just change to, I have, instead of I want to. And that's fine. Um, and that can be a trait that's usable for later. You could say, in, in your big speech, to somebody, you could say, but I'm the one who redeemed the worship of Spo." And even if they never heard of it, you are still drawing on your, you know, your sense mm -hmm. of accomplishment here. And there you go. You got your trait. So you can, by, by making situation-specific traits right now, they become usable character traits. Later. Later. Yeah. Mm. Okay. In, the, in the, the sense of a true sense of your character right who they are so uh, so that is fully legit and frankly very much i think where the strength of the game lies um so uh so there are those and for those of you who didn't catch this earlier oh it was just me and menu um you know about how to spend pool dice to give your traits bonuses number mm -hmm. one you know that if you already have a bonus and you want to increase it you just calculate the difference between the two yeah. right? and then you make up the difference. That's fine. You can do that at any time, including during play. Yes. It is a one-way trip. You cannot look at your sheet, drop trait values, and increase your pool. There's yes. also this nonsense in my manuscript about how in the beginning of the session you get pool dice to start the session. Mm -hmm. which is a terrible rule, and I absolutely disavow it. I know exactly okay. where it came from, and it came from dumb people and James being too nice. So none of whom had actually played. Well, no, I, I think it's it's a great perk of the game. I mean, I had to wriggle a lot of dice the first night, yeah, and now right. I only have three. Right. It's so easy to back so You're them, saying you know? people should start with zero. I'm saying every trait should, every session should pick up with whatever pool points you had at the end of the last one. So the first one should start at zero. No, I did not say that. The oh, first okay. one begins with whatever you have left after getting your traits. Oh, okay, cool. So what's the rule that that uh, each session you get new pool dice? Yes. I uh, was that in the game. Uh, sadly, yes. Well, it depends on oh, what you mean. Sounds, uh... Remember, the pool exists as a set of living edits to a document right mm -hmm. so whatever particular printout one person happens to have who knows that just got in there at some point and if your copy has it well my copy has it and i have a sharpie cross on it so if my copy has it we haven't been following it right yeah, so I guess that's this... good. right okay yeah. so excellent 